So I wanted to get my tomatoes and my peppers started today because it is finally starting to warm up a little bit outside. So if you want to see how I start my peppers and my tomatoes, uh, come play it with me. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Carrie Martin and I'm just a city girl who wishes she was a country girl who is currently living in the burbs. If this is your first time here, then hello and welcome. I'm a micro homesteader, so I do things a little bit differently than um, other micro homesteaders probably, um, or at least I think I do. I grow outdoors, as most would, but I also grow a lot of my food indoors using hydroponics. So if that's something that you're interested in, then stick around and please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you will know when I post videos in the future. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up because YouTube loves that. Now it's time I've got all my stuff behind me. There we go. My little trays and my Promix that I love. So this isn't going to be a very formal video in terms of instruction or anything like that. I just wanted to bring you guys along, kind of talk about some of the tomatoes that I'm growing, what varieties, why I like them. Uh, and same with the peppers, just to kind of share what I'll be growing in my garden for this year. So if you've seen some of my other videos, we are in my teeny tiny kitchen that is in desperate need of a makeover. And hopefully at some point I will actually get around to that. But right now there's more important things to do like planting tomatoes and peppers. So I'm going to flip the camera around and I'll show you some of the things that I'm going to use and also then talk about my favorite thing to talk about, seeds. So I guess the thing to do now is to get some soil into my tray and then we will get going. Okay, so this is the unit I'm going to be using to plant my seeds in. It is by Floriflex. Um, pretty sure it's, it's meant for growing weed, but I just love it because it's so burly. And this is not a sponsored post. I just happened to find this thing and I love it. It's got these great little notches so everything links in. The other thing I am using is my Promix. So I have some seedlings starting mix there, uh, which I think is important. I love Promix, but if you have another brand, then you're good to go. I'll put the links for the things um, that are on Amazon down below in case you're interested. I also have some Promix vermiculite. And the last thing I'm going to be using are these incubator plugs. They're also by Floriflex. And all right, there it is. So they're also by Floriflex and uh, they just fit right into the unit. They had some uh, biochar in them, which I thought would be really interesting because I've done some research on that and it seems to be quite good. Uh, so we're going to give that a try and we're going to try some of the plants in the incubator plugs and some of them we will do them with soil and vermiculite and just see if there's any difference in how things grow because I love doing garden experiments. And then we wouldn't be able to plant if we didn't have these guys to talk about. So I have my sweet peppers. I keep them in these little containers. I will put a link up above to my seed organizing video if you want to see how big um, my seed collection is. And uh, it's, yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> so these are my sweet peppers. We'll do some of those. We will be doing some hot peppers. These are Tabasco ones. We will do some tomatoes. These are my cherry tomatoes. I have a lot of dwarf varieties to grow in the uh, hydroponic systems. And then we will doing some larger tomatoes as well. So I'll just take off the grow dome. Um, it has some little vents in it. They're good when you're getting started or so I've heard. Um, I'm giving them a try um, and we'll see how it goes. They don't need to stay on forever. Um, but apparently they're good when they're getting started to keep the humidity in. Um, and then the second part of this system is actually two parts. So there's the bottom tray and then uh, the cells. These things are just honestly, they're, they're really good. These are going to last for years, or at least I believe so. So I have a couple of them. I might actually get a couple more. Uh, the tray underneath is key as well because with seedlings you really want to be able to water them from below. Uh, it's just going to help be one more thing to prevent against damping off because we don't want to deal with that. The other thing I love about these is they've got a big hole in the bottom. So you can easily push out the seedlings um, without uh, hopefully damaging them. So that will be uh, a really good thing to try as well. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one half in the plugs and then one half in the 
the, the seedling starting mix. The seedling starting mix, I'll be putting a little bit of vermiculite on top, again, to try and help prevent damping off, which is pretty much death to seedlings. So we want to avoid that. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out these incubator plugs. So I'm kind of curious to see what they're like. I'm assuming they're going to be kind of squishy because they're in a Ziploc bag, but we shall see. Teeny tiny hole in the center. So we'll go ahead and plop these guys in here. I think I might, I'm going to have to make the hole a little bit bigger. That's a bit of a, a small one. And I'm really curious to see um, if these make a difference because they were a lot more expensive than the soil and almost triple But I wanted to give them a try because I'm always love doing garden experiments to see uh, You know does one plant of medium work better does one seedling starting method work better? So I always like to try uh, different things Okay, so the I'm gonna move my seeds the plugs are all in the other side. So now on this side, I am going to put in my Promex. And I love this stuff because it has mycorrhizae in it, which are key to soil, which are the life of the soil, essentially. I've heard it said that if you take care of the soil, the plants will take care of themselves. So essentially build the right soil, build a healthy soil and you will have a good harvest. I am actually going no dig this year. Uh, again, inspired by Charles Dowding. So we will see how that works out. It makes sense. If you don't disturb the soil, you don't disturb the structures. If you don't disturb the structures, the soil is stronger and healthier. On top of that, it's less work. You know, I have a full-time job. I have multiple side hustles. So anything that's going to be beneficial and take less work, is a win-win in my books. I'll we'll have to see how that goes. I'm going to do a bunch of videos on uh, going no dig and seeing how it works. This, the point of this is, this being YouTube, for me at least, is to share what I know and encourage other people to grow and grow their own food and become more self-sufficient. All right, so, whoops, we got soil on the plugs. We don't want to contaminate this experiment. So, almost done. And you want to make sure that the soil's not in there too loosely, so I am pressing them down a bit. That one's way too low. Because this is essentially, this is your food for your plants. So you wanna make sure that there's enough in there to support them as they grow, especially with bigger plants, such as the peppers and tomatoes. Okay, so that is all done. So I think I'm gonna do the hot peppers first. And we will go with what I'm going to try some of these Tabascos. So it says introduced into Louisiana in 19 or 1848, uh, became the main ingredient in Tabasco pepper sauce. Very hot and delicious flavor. Grows up to four feet tall. That's going to be a big one. So I'll try these and then I'm going to try making my own Tabasco sauce. We'll see how that goes. Um, apparently it's actually fermented and anything fermented is good for one's belly. So we'll go ahead and I'm gonna put two seeds in. Um, I usually do two seeds for peppers and two seeds for tomatoes. And then usually what happens is I'm supposed to pick out the weakest one and keep the strong one, which again, logically makes perfect sense, but this is where my logic fails me because they're my plant babies and I can't just kill them. So I usually end up prying out the littlest one and then um, somehow, popping it uh, into soil or something like that. And then I end up with 10,000 plant babies instead of the 5,000 that I planted for. And uh, then madness ensues. So I'm going to try and be disciplined this year and remove the little ones or at worst case, try and pass them on to other people so that they can live fruitful lives in other people's gardens. And then no plant babies were harmed in this growing experiment. And now I need to find a pen so I can do my labels so I don't forget everything that I planted in here. So, uno momento, I will return. All right, we have our plant label. So I do usually do a little plan of what I have in here. I also have my plans I'm working on for my 
garden. I want to put in some um, of the cattle panel trellises. Uh, if anyone has built one, I'd love to know how it goes. Let me know down in the comments how that went for you. Um, I have to get my cattle panel here. I ordered it um, and then sent my husband to pick it up in our little tiny Honda Civic. For some reason in my head, it was gonna come rolled up and it would fit in our car. It doesn't. Pretty sure the people at the store laughed hysterically at him and he came home with no cattle panel trellis. So anyways, still have to figure that one out. So next one I'm going to plant is these pepperoncini peppers. I absolutely love them. Um, so I wanna pickle those and see how they go. So I haven't grown these before either. So, And we'll just see how it goes. So now I just gotta remember not to put all the peppers on the one side because I wanna do peppers and tomatoes both in the, uh, in the plugs and in the soil. We will do some habaneros. These ones are some mustard habaneros. I don't even know if they still have these ones at Baker Creek. Oh yeah, Baker Creek, I should mention that. So. Um, I'm obsessed with heirloom seeds. It's the only uh, seeds that I grow. Why? Because um, there are just so many more varieties that you can grow. Um, things you would never see at the grocery store. One thing you need to realize is grocery store vegetables have lied to you. That is not what real vegetables look like or taste like, in my opinion. Um, you don't get beautiful red, well not to say that the tomatoes you would grow are not beautiful, but you don't get those perfectly round red tomatoes out of your garden, especially if you're growing um, heirloom seeds. You're going to get bumpy tomatoes, wrinkled tomatoes, um, tomatoes with cracking, tomatoes with all different things because that's ha what happens when you grow real food. It's also going to taste so much better and be better for you. Oh my god, you see that? That's where I have to go and sand and paint. I hate this kitchen. I hate this kitchen. But anyways, yes, grocery store tomato vegetables are lying to you. So that is just not what comes out of your garden. So you have to kind of get over that when you start growing your own food. Because um, if you have that vision of perfect fruit and vegetables, um, it can be a bit of a not culture shock, but it can be a bit of a shock to the system because that is just not what happens. So, yeah, so it's good to know that. But anyways, so the reason I love the heirloom seeds is because there is so much more variety. You're not just going to get like a green pepper. We'll get to see when I get to actually, you know what, I'll just pull one out right now. Like your sweet peppers. These ones are blot peppers. They are not yellow, they are not orange, they are not red, they are not green. They are kind of a little bit of everything in between. Uh, these ones are actually from Russia and they're supposed to be amazingly sweet. So you get all these different vegetables from different countries and you can learn a little bit and all the heirloom seeds have fabulous stories and that's why I love them too, learning their stories and perpetuating these plants on into future generations. I mean, I'm doing that in my own garden. I can then locally adapt them as well because I can save the seeds. So I will put my seed saving video above. But when you locally adapt them, you get so many benefits as well. I have a whole blog post on that. So that I will put in the description because otherwise I'm gonna talk about it forever. This is gonna be a two hour long video and no one's gonna watch it. I don't think, unless you'd like longer videos, if you want, longer videos let me know again down in the comments and then I can do that um because definitely I have enough I, I can talk forever about seeds and heirloom seeds specifically so so next up are the Jamaican scotch bonnets I could literally plant just this tray of peppers but I honestly don't have room for that so we will try and show a modicum of restraint um, try being the operative word because I'm not good at being restrained when it comes to planting and we will keep going okay I wrote jalapeno on my list but I of course have three different types of jalapenos so where are they all there's one there's that so I have the Craig's grande the green jalapenos I have orange spice jalapenos and I have lemon spice jalapenos I like them all I'm pretty much I need a bigger garden. 
I really need a lot bigger garden. Oh, I did have, okay, apparently, yes, I did have all of them on the list. So we will do the Craig's Grande first, that one. And then we will do the other ones. I'm actually going to another gardening experiment. Um, we grow, or at least I do, because my I'm in zone, I don't know if it's five or six anymore. Depending where I look, it seems to say different things. It's definitely getting warmer, so I think we're trending towards six. Um, but anyways, I cannot grow peppers um, as a perennial, but they actually turn into a tree. Like We grow them in the garden as an annual, but what I want to try and do is grow them inside um, and grow one jalapeno and one bell pepper side as a tree and then just see how long I can keep it going I mean I think it'd be kind of cool to just have peppers growing um, non-hydroponically year-round because I definitely have a jalapeno that I've had for uh, almost a year down in my air garden farm plus so um, but I want to try one in a pot and see how it goes so that will be another thing this is the year of gardening experiments for me I just really want to find out um, what is going to be my go-to plan. I'm kind of getting the garden to where I want it. I think after getting in that third raised bed in the back, mine are all, uh, mine are all 12 by 4, 12 foot by 4 foot. Um, so putting in the third one of that. And then I'll have the other two raised beds that are in the front and then I will have, or that will be in the front garden. And then I have two small raised beds at the back actually just went out to check on the raised bed at the back and I saw that the rhubarb is finally coming up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you. Okay, so part of micro homesteading is making the most of any space. So this is my sad looking strawberry bed, which will be looking better. And then over here, somewhat overgrown, I started to clean it out. We have the rhubarb that is just starting to come up. And then there's also some grapes in here. So yeah, so there's my baby rhubarb. Okay, so somehow I lost like the whole day. It's night now, but the planting will recommence at this point. Um, one of the things I actually realized that I forgot to mention this morning when I was getting overexcited about planting my tomatoes and peppers was that you should wet down your seedling starting medium first. That way uh, you're not flood pouring water on and having the seeds all move around. I know when I'm putting mine in, I try and get them in the center. So if the seedling, um, if the seedling medium is already wet beforehand, then it's just going to make everything kind of stay put a little bit better. And then you just continue to water them uh, from underneath. Bottom watering, like I said, it helps to prevent with the dampening off. So I poured water underneath and I just let it kind of seep up slowly. So there's the ones we did this morning. And then everything else is now pretty um, pretty wet and uh, I will continue planting my seeds. Okay, so I made up all of my little popsicle sticks somewhere in between when we last talked and now. Uh, so the next one going in is Can. I love these guys. They're one of the ones I use probably other than bell peppers more often than not. So we'll throw in a couple of those. These did really well for me last year. Um, I had lots of canned peppers. I'm just letting them dry and then I'm going to grind them up. I can't believe I forgot to moisten the soil this morning, but I guess it was a good thing we lost some of that time. Okay, next we will do some, oh, okay, the Mazzano peppers. So if you can see, the seeds of these peppers are actually black. Uh, which is one thing that makes them different. Their leaves are also fuzzy. Um, they are native to Peru. This is my first time growing them. Um, I actually got them in one of my seed exchanges. So if you love seeds like I do, then I would strongly suggest joining a seed exchange. There's a couple of them on Facebook. I'm in the I've Got Seeds, You've Got Seeds. I think that's what it's called. Um, but it's a great way to just trade with other people and um, if you have a couple of extras, then you can, if you have extra seeds, then you can change for different types. Typically the exchange is five or 10 seeds, but I think this was 10 for the Mazzano peppers, but you don't need many because as long as one of these grows, I'll hopefully have lots of these peppers and I can save many of them for the future. 
so that's those in. Next, we have some Thai peppers. I'm not sure how these will do. These are older. They are actually, they're packaged in 2019. So some seeds will last better than others. These also did have a, these also do have a low germination warning on them. So they are overpacked, uh, which is good. So I'm actually probably gonna go ahead and put four seeds in here because they're old and because of the low germination rate. So we'll pick out four healthy looking seeds and pop them in there and hope that some of them take. Okay, so that's Thai. Next we have poblano, and I actually have, I wanna go two poblano plants um, because I just love them. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be my first one I'm going to put into the, uh, into the incubator plugs all the other ones i've been doing so far i've actually been putting them just into the seedling starting mix so we'll give this a go and then we have kind of a control i can see did the one make done in the um uh, did the one done in the incubator plugs did that grow better than the ones done in the seedling starting mix or vice versa oh wait there's a couple of other ones that i'm growing multiple types of so i'll do the same thing plug versus seedling starting mix and we will see where we end up so the one thing about these plugs, it's not a very big hole on them. Okay, so that's the poblanos in. Uh, what is next? Next we are going to do some shishito peppers. Another one I got in a trade, just a few seeds in there. So we'll throw some of the shishitos in. I actually just uh, tried these for the first time in 2020. Uh, I had actually done one of those, uh, it was Good Food, one of those food delivery programs. Uh, the hubby had a full hip replacement early February, so a year ago now. Um, so it was just one of those things to make life a little bit easier. And uh, I really liked the Good Food one. I found that it had a lot uh, more interesting recipes than I saw coming out of the HelloFresh because I had tried that one as well. Um, but, and they had a lot more interesting ingredients. And one of them was the shishito peppers. So most of them tend to be very mild, but then every now and then you're supposed to get a hot one. So it's like Russian roulette with peppers. So anyways, I managed to trade for a couple of seeds. So we'll do those and try those ones. And next we have another one of my trades, candy cane pepper. Um, I'm trying to remember what this one looks like. I'm going to Google it. Okay. Candy cane. So it looks like it's a cool, yeah, so it does have a variegated leaf. You guys can see that. So a variegated leaf with a striped pepper. Interesting. Excited about that one. So I can't say enough. I can't go on enough about the seed exchanges. I just love them. I love it. Um, typically, especially if you buy a pack of seeds, there's so many in it. I mean, unless you're doing it on, on a really large scale, I mean, how quickly am I going to be able to use up like, I don't know, 300 or a thousand lettuce seeds. Like there's just, it's so easy to trade and it's so much more beneficial to be able to trade and to get other um, varieties because there's just so many seeds in a pack. You just don't need them all. Okay, so candy cane, I think I had it in my hot peppers, but it looks like it's a sweet variety, so. I put that in the wrong bunch. I'm going to move that over. Next, we will do serrano peppers. Oops. Next, we have the weary, weary pepper. This is from what I did, the Guyanese pepper. So there's an older lady that lives on my street, and she was so excited about weary, weary peppers. We were talking about plants and stuff. So I actually went and got these for her. Um, so I can grow a couple for her, but I am going to try and grow a couple myself. It's supposed to be a hot, very flavorful pepper. That's what she told me. And the last hot pepper that I have is the fish pepper. This is also another variegated leaf pepper. Um, I really wanted this one. It was one of the ones I was looking for. I only got five seeds. So hopefully both of these germinate. So those are all the hot peppers, with the exception of that candy cane that I put in the wrong container. 
But um, I'm gonna move on now to the rest of the sweet peppers. So the first one um, is this black pepper. I think I showed it earlier, uh, which is from Russia. So I'm really excited to, to try this one. I was growing um, some downstairs in the air garden, uh, but it didn't do well, not through any fault of growing it hydroponically, but I brought some dirt in from outside, which I won't do again, um, because I ended up bringing in some thrips. So now I have a thrips infestation that I'm trying to deal with downstairs. So keep your outside plants outside and your inside plants inside. Put this under hashtag lessons learned the hard way. So anyways, thrips, when they get in there, they can damage the new leaves and suffice it to say, the black pepper got damaged. So next, on the sweet peppers, we are going to do the Du de España. It's a really large pepper. So these can get six to seven inches long. Um, it's also called the Spanish Mammoth. I have another mammoth pepper as well. I'll get to that one in a second. I'd love to know what your favorite peppers or tomatoes are to grow because I'm always looking for new varieties to try. Uh, so if you have any that you would like to suggest, um, if I haven't already mentioned them, um, even though I've mentioned a lot, uh, I'd love to know. So put your favorites down in the comments below and I'll take a look. I'd love to find some new varieties to try. And if they're heirlooms and you know the story behind it, go ahead and put that down in there so other people can see. It's great to, um, I love learning about the plants that I'm growing and where they come from. Um, another one I got was, it's a tiny little pepper. Uh, it's called a doe hill. Another one I haven't tried before. I was doing an exchange, a seed exchange with someone and uh, they didn't have anything that I saw that I really wanted. Um, so I was asking, I, so I asked them for some of their suggestions and they suggested this one. So we'll see how it does. It actually is a really cute looking pepper. Next, ah, the yellow monster. So these ones are actually even bigger than the Du de España. These ones can grow to eight inches long and four inches wide. So I'm really excited to give these a go. For the incubator plug, top stick just to give them a gentle nudge in, done. And next we have the Golden Cal Wonder. I wrote up one for it. Oh yes, Cal Wonder Yellow. So we'll put this one in and then somewhere in there, I have some red ones, I think. So I'll get those two in there. I'm really hoping this year with starting with the no dig that it really makes a big difference and I can grow even more food. It's such a great way. It's easier. So it's less watering, less work, less weeding. I mean, it sounds pretty amazing and you keep the soil structures intact. So I did just plant some of these little mini bell peppers into my personal rice garden. Put the link up above to the video where I was talking about planting those. At the beginning of it, I'm talking about how to clean the rice garden. So if you want to just skip to the seed stuff, just skip to the end. Okay, next, oh, there's the other California Wonders. So we will put those in. So I'd love to know, what are you guys uh, most looking forward to growing this year? Is it tomatoes and peppers? Those are probably my two go-to things, though I plant like everything else as well. Um, but what's your favorite thing to grow outside of that? I know I asked for your favorite peppers and tomatoes, but if you have another favorite thing, let me know down in the comments. I would love to see other things. I just love to know anything extra to grow. So this one is a lipstick pepper. This was actually one of the ones I got for uh, a free seed from Baker Creek. I absolutely love that they do that. These ones are getting um, a little bit old too. So I'm going to, where did I just put it? Oh, there we go. Um, I'm going to have to save some of these this year so that I have some fresh seeds. And next one, the Arroz con Pollo pepper, another sweet red pepper. These ones are also getting a little old. I've got a lot of seeds for kind of like their last cycle through. So this will be a big seed saving year for me. 
uh, I have a video on uh, saving seeds. I'll put that above uh, so that um, if in case anybody else wants to start saving their own seeds. Uh, that's one of the great things about using heirloom seeds is you can save your own seeds and then you don't have to buy them anymore. Or if you're like me, you just use the money to buy other heirloom seeds that you won't then have to buy anymore. And it's, it's just a continuous thing that happens. So these ones, the habanada peppers. So they're basically like a habanero with no heat. And these are from Row 7 Seeds. I just love these seeds packages. They're just so pretty to me. So I have a couple of these. I think I have almost everything that Row 7 Seeds sells, almost. I have a couple more in the mail because they just came out with uh, a couple of new varieties. So I got the Midnight Roma. I got the Robin's Koji Nut Squash. That's not a new one, but they were always out of stock. And the other one that I got was the Flame Badger Beet. It's supposed to be a beet that doesn't have that deep earthy flavor, which I'm sure some people who love beets do love that, but I don't. But I would love to eat more beets because I know they're good for you. So I was hoping that to try those and see if I like those better than regular beets. That said, I'm gonna grow regular beets anyways. Uh, so the last two peppers I have for the sweet peppers. So the last two peppers I have for the sweet peppers are these two. So the Lesia is one of the sweetest of all peppers, it says. It doesn't say where it's from. And the other one, the Riwia, Riwia, I'm totally butchering this. Apologies if anyone knows how to say it properly. Um, and this one is from Poland. I just got these. They're on my latest seed order. I don't think there's any more in the mail. Sometimes it's a surprise when the seeds show up and I'm like, oh, oops, <laughs> did I order those? Yep. So I've stopped even saying I'm not ordering more seeds because I'm always ordering more seeds. So we will try these. I'm really excited to try these. They just, and these ones just look so cool. I love them. So we'll see how these go. And then after I get these guys in, we will move on to the tomatoes, which are probably, they're my favorite over peppers. If I had to pick, I'd be team tomato all day long. So once I've got these all planted up, I will take them downstairs, put them on a heat mat. You don't have to have a heat mat. Uh, it can be really helpful when you're first germinating, um, getting the seeds to germinate, especially for peppers, they like the heat. Um, but it's not to say you have to have that. I'll so I'll put a link down in the description to the heat mat that I have. It's good to have one that has a thermostat so you can have a little bit more control. Uh, but like I said, you don't have to have it. It's not something that I had to begin with. I kind of got it as I grew more and found out that this was really something that I loved and wanted to keep doing. Then you just start investing in the different uh, products that you, that you use and that can kind of up your gardening game. But if you're just starting out, just try with the seeds. Find out if it's something that you really enjoy. And then if you do, then you can invest in a heat mat or anything else, grow lights or whatever later on. Oh yes, that's it. I'll put a link to my grow light down below. And there are many, there are many, many different kinds. This is just the one that I happen to have. Uh, I'm gonna try a couple of new ones. I wanna get a grow tent and do a whole bunch of other things, but you know, you use what you have and you get what you can afford. And there's always time to add more later on. All right, so that is it for the peppers. Now we move on to the tomatoes. So this one is the Brad's Atomic Grape. I saw in another video on YouTube by Baker Creek that this was actually their best selling seed like ever. Um, they're, they're good, they're nice. They're such a cool looking tomato too. And they have so many different colors. Honestly, this is why I love heirlooms. These are spoon tomatoes. Look how teeny tiny they are. They're like little babies. I'm just like, how do you not buy them? It felt so girly ordering this. I'm like, oh my God, they're so cute. I have to order them. And then I ordered them. So anyways, spoon tomatoes. We'll see how they turn out. I just think they'd be so cool. Oh my God, the seeds are so tiny. Okay, those, I mean, I guess it makes sense seeing as they're like microscopic tomatoes, but holy doodle. Those are the tiniest tomato seeds I have ever seen. Okay, so making sure it's not stuck on my uh, chopstick there. Okay, that was the spoon tomatoes. What else do we have? Oh, the Napa Chardonnay. These ones looked really good. So it's a mutation from the Napa Blush Rose, sweet yellow cherries, and many say it is the very best cherry type they have ever tasted. So we are going to try this now. There we go, Napa. 
So I'm going to give this one a try. I didn't grow it last year, so I must have given seeds to someone. Maybe it was part of my seed exchange. And then a lot of these I'm going to have to save seeds this year because even when you get them from Baker Creek, for some of the more um, rare varieties, you don't get you don't get as many seeds. Okay, so that's the napas. I'm gonna do a separate video on my top ten favorite seeds from Baker Creek. Spoiler: this one will be on there. It is the Sunrise Bumblebee Cherry Tomato. These things are amazing. I just sit out in the garden out of all the tomatoes use the ones I just sit there and eat. Honestly, most of them don't even make it into the house for dinner or anything because I eat them while I'm in the garden. They're just, and the hubby hates tomatoes. Like he just really could live a life without tomatoes. So, which to me is like soul crushing, but he just doesn't like them. But these are, he actually asks me to grow these every year. So we're going to grow two of those. So I'm going to do one in the incubator pod. Get that in there. And then I will do one in the soil so that we have a comparison. I'm really curious to see if these incubator pods actually make a difference because they were so much more expensive. I think I said, what did I say? They were like three times as much. So it'll be interesting to see. Oh, great. I got my seed stuck on there. I'm honestly so happy it's time to start seeds because I don't know what I would have done without my hydroponic systems. Honestly, I would have been lost because I can't go that long without growing anything. Okay, these ones, tiger tomatoes. Pretty excited about those. I did grow these last year. The leaves are really different on these. They're kind of frilly and very, very dainty. So they're kind of a cool one. I think that's two seeds there. So these are going in one of the grow pods. This chopstick is really coming in handy. All right, so that was it for those cherry tomatoes that I have bought. Now the other ones we're gonna be planting are all cherry tomato seeds that I traded. So I mentioned how much I love the Sunrise Bumblebee. The next one I am going to plant is I actually, I was actually able to trade for some of the purple bumblebee. So those are going to go in here as well. Man, I've got a lot of peppers and tomatoes. And the crazy thing is, I didn't even grow them all. I've got a bunch that I had, to, I had to pick and choose what ones were going in. So one day when I have my five to 10 acres of land and all my farm animals, I will grow everything. Okay, what do we have next? Oh, these, okay, so another one that's a cool one that I was able to trade for is the Brad's Crazy Cherry Tomato. I don't know if anyone watching has grown it, but I'm so curious about this. I believe it's called a multiflora, and it can have branches that have like, I'm not even joking, it looks like, I'll say conservatively 50, but some of them look, looking at it, it looks like 100 cherry tomatoes on a single branch. Dancing with Smurfs. That one, I just had to get it because of the name. And then after this, we will get into the larger tomato varieties. Another great thing about uh, joining the seed exchange and exchanging with other people, you can talk to people that actually grew the seed, you know, and get some information from them. Now, as I was mentioning before, just be, what worked for them may not work for you in your garden, but it's still good to get the information and see, and then you can, you know, tease it out and figure out what you want to implement, implement and what you don't. Um, but sometimes it's just nice to talk to someone that's grown up before and they can tell you some stuff about it. Okay, next tomatoes. These ones, I have so many. It's ridiculous, honestly. So I've got so many that I'm not growing. So I'm going to do one of my favorites, the pink brandy wine. I actually have three different brandy wines. There's the pink brandy wine, the yellow brandy wine, and the black brandy wine. And the brandy wine is what they call a potato leaf tomato. So it actually, the leaves look like the leaves off of a potato, which is not so far-fetched because potatoes and tomatoes are related. It is one of the reasons you don't want to normally plant your 
tomatoes and your potatoes too close to each other because the blight can jump between them. If you want a tomato to freak people out um, and depress because it tastes absolutely delicious is the Black Beauty. And this picture is exactly what they look like. They are so dark. Um, so I love growing these ones. The first year I grew them, they didn't do very well, uh, but last year they were insane. I had so many of them. I have found that they're prone to cracking though, a lot of like circular cracking on the fruit. Um, doesn't harm anything. You just want to make sure you don't leave them too long because it can um, start to rot if you're not careful. So you got to pick them when they start having the cracking on them, but absolutely delicious. There was also a blue beauty. Uh, I just, there's also a blue beauty one. I just don't have room for it this year. So, but I will always have the room for the black beauty in my garden. We're getting to the end of this. Another one I always do, San Marzano tomatoes. I love these. Uh, these are ones, I, again, I have two I'm going to do. So we will do one in soil and one in a pellet. These are great for making tomato sauce because they are a paste tomato. So the paste tomatoes don't tend to have a lot of seeds um, in them. So it's also, that's the only negative thing is trying to save them. You don't have a lot to work with but there's actually one tomato coming up that is massive, but had the least amount of seeds that I've personally seen in a tomato, which is which was kind of crazy given its size, but we'll get to that one in a second. So we'll put these other San Marzanos in here. This is, from what I understand, the go-to sauce tomato for um, in Italy. Spoiler alert, again, this will also be on my top 10 list, the mushroom basket tomato. I love this thing. I have told so many people about this. Um, it's my absolute favorite. I'm actually doing four of them because that's how much I like it. So one's going in the dirt for a comparison and the other ones will be going into the uh, incubator plugs. They're just, they're a beautiful tomato. The taste on them was amazing. I used them for sauce. I used them for slicing, just eating. They're just, uh, they're, and they're a determinant because I tried this last year was actually my first year growing these because I wanted to try some determinant tomatoes because uh, they were supposed to be better for sauce because the difference is the determinant tomatoes grow to a specific height uh, and they give most of their fruit at the same time which is why they are so good for sauce because if you you need a lot of because you need a lot of tomatoes for sauce so it's handy to have a lot of them ready at the same time whereas an indeterminate tomato will continue growing uh, basically until the frost kills it, which is actually, um, as I was mentioning, that tomatoes and potatoes are closely related. Potatoes are also determinate and indeterminate. So some people, when they're doing potato towers, they will put in um, determinate tomato potatoes in there. And then those actually aren't great for the potato towers. If you're going to make one, you should try and make sure that you get an indeterminate uh, potato variety so that it'll continue growing as you raise the tower up. So just another fun fact. Six more. I think I miscounted. I only have five spots left. So we will do, okay, decisions. Decisions had to be made, cuts happened. So next we will do, oh my God, I've got so many tomatoes that I'm not growing. Orange accordion. I am also on a goal to grow a two pound tomato. I was so close last year. I think I was 1.87, but I'm holding out hope that this thing will be a two pound tomato. We'll see. So this is the orange accordion. And it looked a lot like the mushroom basket that I loved, so not to judge a book by a cover, but I'm hoping it's nice like that one. We'll see. I feel like it has the ability to be a two to grow a two pounder. Hopefully. All right, so come on. Seeds are big. 
Okay, so remember I was mentioning the tomato that was massive but had almost no seeds? It's this guy, the pink jazz tomato. So we shall see. It's a striped beef steak that can weigh one pound and sweet flavored with a hint of peach, which is funny because that leads into one of the other cool tomatoes that I picked up. We'll do that one last. Save the most interesting for last because I have no idea if it's the best because I haven't tried it. Okay, pink jazz tomatoes or pink jazz seeds. Ooh. Okay, these have to be saved this year. I think I've got like one left in there. Okay, so three left. This one I got in a trade as well. It's a Dr. Light cheese. I saw a lot of people in my gardening forums that I'm in going on about or talking about this one and it, they seem to really like it. So I traded for a couple of seeds. So it'll be my first time trying this one. Then I have this one, the white Thomasol. It was a new, uh, a new one that I've got for Baker Creek for a free seed. I guess they switch them up every now and then. Uh, so this was a new one. I got a lot of ragged jack kale and I got a lot of mustard greens or Japanese mustard. No, giant mustard. I don't know. Some kind of mustard leaves. And then, so we'll try these white tomasols. So the last one that I have to plant is this one, the orange peach. And this one really intrigued me. So it says, it's a perfectly peachy with the lightly fuzzy skin. So kind of like the manzanos that had the fuzzy leaves, this one has fuzzy skin apparently. It's nutritious and has a uh, splendid sweet flavor. The orange peach, which we find even more peachy, was a chance cross by a Pennsylvania farmer and heirloom expert, James Weaver. So apparently there was the, um, apparently one of these was, these were used to make almost like a, a fake marmalade um, that people liked. So anyways, I have to try it. It'll be interesting to see how peachy it actually tastes. So lots of new things in the garden this year growing for the first time, thanks to the seed exchanges I did. And then I need a lot more space because there's a lot more that I want to grow. There's a never ending amount that I want to grow. So the last thing that I'm going to do on the side that has the soil, um, the seed bank starting mix, I'm just going to add some vermiculite. See that? Uh, and it just helps to, like I said, it helps to prevent damping off. So I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top not too much. And then I will get these downstairs under the grow lights. And then I'll be doing some update videos on the onions that I grew. I'll put a link up above to my onion experiment and I will give updates on both in a future video and on what's growing in my rise garden. I think I'm gonna do a couple more of those types of videos just with updates on what's going on, um, things like that. So let me know down in the comments below if there's something you'd like to see in a video, if there's a question you have, do you want to know more about the hydroponics? Do you want to know more about growing uh, in small spaces? Do you want to know more about generally being a micro homesteader? Okay, so there we go. All of those with the soil that have the vermiculite on top, and then we have all of these over here with the incubator plugs. So thanks for hanging around with me while I natter on about tomatoes and peppers and planting and all sorts of things like that. Hopefully that was helpful or at least informative and you guys learned some stuff. So don't forget that gardening is an adventure and a journey and about figuring out what works for you and your garden with what you like to grow. And so until next time, go out there and make food grow.